Guys, let's go to Dan Pollock, the Zionist Organization of America. He's Director of Government Relations. Great to have you, Dan. Thanks for having me and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. You know, I think back to the Abraham Accords and the uh, relationship President Trump had with the state of Israel, the nation of Israel, and it just is remarkably different. You go back before Trump, Obama kept Benjamin Netanyahu in the waiting room for about 14 hours. This seems to be a trend that's continued with the Biden regime, yes? It is. There are some really troubling things that have occurred in the last month. And the most egregious, as you said, the number of anti-Israel people and anti-Semites that are present in the Obama administration is truly astounding. There's the ambassador to Brazil. Her name is unfortunately recently confirmed just two weeks ago, Elizabeth Frawley Bagley. And incredibly, she was criticized by Democrats at her confirmation hearing for tremendously anti-Semitic things she said, including that the Democratic Party has a stupid pro-Israel Jewish factor, and there is always the influence of the Jewish lobby because they're major money uh, donors involved. She said all these things and was criticized by the Democrats on the committee, and then in a voice vote, as Congress was shutting down, the Senate confirmed her, and she's now our ambassador to Brazil. It's, it's hard to imagine any other type of racism that could be expressed and bigotry that would result in everyone sweeping it under the rug and saying, well, she's still a good candidate for an ambassadorship. That's why this whole racist thing is a facade. It's really just geared at people they don't like. They use those terms to people they don't like. What she said was abhorrent. It was a terrible thing to say. And if you're going to be an ambassador, maybe you shouldn't have a visible hatred for a country because that's actually damaging to our national security. <laughs> and Brazil is a key country. And uh, unfortunately, they've undergone a transition from a pro-American and pro-Israel, funny how often those things are aligned, leader to an anti-American and anti-Israel leader that she's now going to be our envoy to. So it's really troubling. But we have at our website, zoa.org, a whole list of more than a dozen a high officials in the administration. If you have time, I'll speak about a number of them, but I'll happy to answer your questions about it. The, the overall pattern is incredible tolerance for anti-Semitic and anti-Israel statements by high officials. This is just one part of their hatred for a lot of Americans and Jews, even Jews that are not in America. So let me uh, go ahead and highlight a few of these, because what I've been trying to do on this show is really bring forth how radical these nominees are. And the Senate in 2023 is going to be so dangerous for America because of their plan with the judges. Talk about some of these people, because I don't think the mainstream media, I don't think a lot of shows are covering this the way they should. These people are completely anti-American radicals. Well, there are, there's a whole other argument about how anti-American some of the people are. We focus in ZOA. Yeah. With, um, there's really two kinds of people that we're concerned about. People who are anti-Semites, and we have a number of those, and I'll speak about them, and then anti-Israel people. And just for your listeners, the idea that a person is anti-Zionist doesn't mean they're not anti-Semitic. It turns out that a great many anti-Zionist people are also anti-Semitic. Some of these anti-Zionist and anti-Semitic people are also Jews, unfortunately, for, for us, the Jewish people. But those are facts. And the actual quotes by these people are admitted to. They're not controversial. Uh, it's truly astounding. One of the worst is uh, a guy named Hadi Amar, A-M-R, who was promoted since he's been appointed in the administration to be, instead of being the deputy assistant secretary in the State Department, he was elevated to the special envoy to the Palestinian Arabs, oh, which boy. is akin to an ambassadorship. And he said that he was inspired by the Palestinian intifada, which is the Arabic word for the violent revolt that has taken the lives, injured and, and killed, uh, over the last few years, more than 10,000 Israeli Jews, and he is inspired by it. He is uh, 
very anti-Israel and was known so before he was appointed. In fact, that was why he was appointed. Yeah. And of course, there was no confirmation process for that position. There's one thing of note to your listeners, a law passed more than a year ago means that people in these positions, some of whom were never confirmed, are supposed to now be confirmed by the Senate. And it's going to be interesting to see how the Senate handles um, both for our uh, envoy to uh, to Iran and for this Hadi Amar, uh, two of the worst people, they've never been confirmed. Uh, the envoy to Iran, of course, is uh, Rob Malley. And these are people that could never be confirmed because of their extensive record saying horrible things. So uh, another overt example that people may not, well, they see her every day on TV. Uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, the president's spokesperson, uh, she has a horrible history of anti-Semitism. She was the one who said, well, she's an overt supporter of BDS, the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions movie, movement against Israel. And she was the one who said that anyone who goes to the extremely tame pro-Israel APEC conference as a politician should be uh, excluded from the Democratic Party. She urged presidential candidates not to attend the conference. It's, it's kind of incredible that she has been given a free pass, but she has the right uh, pronouns and the right uh, sexual preference and the right skin color, and, and she seems to be beyond beyond any criticism. It's true. Um, she's the worst press secretary that's ever been. And, I mean, just absolutely no knowledge of anything except for her radical statements in the past. She checked all the boxes, and that's why she has that job. What they're trying to do is put a face on America instead of putting brains behind America. <laughs> and uh, these anti-Semitic uh, statements goes to the Joe Biden himself. I mean, you could go through history and talk about and show things he supported and said that makes it quite clear where he stands as well. Well, there's been a long history. Uh, he has supported various Israeli governments but he's extremely partisan about it and partisan both the American sense and the Israeli sense. He's much less friendly to uh, what he calls extreme right Israeli politicians. And of course, the new prime minister of Israel taking over just this week is Benjamin Netanyahu, who is going to be uh, probably have some struggles with the Biden administration. One thing we saw this week is Secretary of State Blinken, who again has a history of uh, very uh, mixed policy on Israel. He said the Abraham Accords, which is such a good thing for everyone in the region, he said it's leverage on the Israelis to force them to do something about the Palestinian Arab problem. Basically that he's going to condition continued support for American uh, involvement in furthering the Abraham Accords on progress on the Palestinian Arab front. In fact, the greatest accomplishment of that agreement is that other Arab countries, Sunni countries, uh, saw fit to move forward in their relations with Israel without consideration that the Palestinian Arab terrorist groups could veto any progress if they don't like what was being said. That's the advantage of the Abraham Accords, and Secretary of State Blinken seems to have it backwards. Well, I knew they'd want to get their grubby little hands on that Abraham Accord. It seems like they've been leaving them alone, but now now that they're going to be using them as leverage, that's very troubling, Dan. It is. And, of course, the, the key reason for the Abraham Accords is that the Arab countries of the region want to unite with Israel against the threat from Iran. And that's something that President uh, Biden and his administration has been just terrible at handling, the entire threat from Iran. And the fact is, Iran is moving forward with a nuclear weapon under our noses right now. And uh, I, I fear to say this, but Israel may have to, in the future, take what they call kinetic action. They may have to physically uh, intervene in Iran militarily. And that's America's foreign policy interest would be to make that as unnecessary as possible. Yeah, no, that would be because... That would definitely trigger what's going on with Russia and Ukraine into World War III. That would be absolutely disastrous. But Israel might have to because they're surrounded by people that hate them. 
<laughs> and, and when we had the Trump administration, say what you want, otherwise, he was the greatest friend to Israel and recognizing that the American-Israel relationship was a two-way street that benefited both countries. And there was no president that did more for the American-Israel relationship. And ZOA is all about that. We were very proud to honor him. And no president is perfect, but it is just incredible. And the Biden administration's imperfections are so much worse in every respect, uh, in, in foreign policy in general, but particularly when it comes to our strongest ally, Israel. No, absolutely. And Israel's a very important ally in that region. They just don't seem to care. They want to play victimhood with the Palestinians. That's what they want to do. And of course, the, the real victims here, in addition to the Israelis, are there are, you know, Palestinian Arabs who want to make peace with Israel. But when the administration gives a platform to the worst terrorists and seems to elevate Mahmoud Abbas, who's in the 15th year of his four year term, talk about lack of democracy. Yeah. They, they still call him president for some reason, but it's a, it's a joke, literally, quite literally. It's and of course, the Palestinian Arabs are the ones who suffer under this bad leadership. That's exactly right. That's a good point. Nobody talks about that either. People can get more information at the website. Please, Dan Pollack from ZOA, give us all the information you can so people can help out and read more resources. Our website is www.zoa.org. We have a list of all the horrible appointees from the Biden administration and what they've each done and said that's either anti-Semitic or uh, anti-Israel. And it is really appalling that it doesn't get more attention. I've seen the list, Dan. If you and I went through every one of them, it would take two and a half hours. That's quite right. I was going to tell you, uh, you give me as much time as you want. And I'll name names. And there are some that are worse than others. And those are the most egregious. This ambassador to Brazil, the fact that she got confirmed anyway with the votes of the people who objected to her yeah. is, is a travesty. That's That's what I don't understand. They voted for someone they condemned. And if they... If those are the public tweets, imagine how she feels on the stage internally. Unreal. Dan Pollack, thanks so much for joining us. We'll get this information out there as well. Thank you, and Happy New Year.